Welcome to Beginner's Course Remastered, the final lesson in the series, Lesson 8, Live Trading. All right, it's time to put it all in action, the entire Beginner's Course, all summed up into one lesson where we can do this stuff together. We're going to be talking about levels, targets, trends, level adaptation, everything we talked about in the Beginner's Course throughout the series of this, we're going to be doing together on a trade. So. For the most part, I've focused on Bitcoin and some of these cryptocurrencies because it's kind of new and fresh and hype in the market right now. But for this example, we're going to do the S&P 500 because I constantly get asked the question, is this specific to cryptocurrencies? Does it work in commodities? Does it work in foreign exchange, Forex? Does it work in the stock markets? The reality is, is it actually was created back in the 80s before cryptocurrency and some of these other markets blew up. So this is actually a science that has just been broadly used across all markets. It is one specific set of rules that have been constantly refined over a period of time throughout the lifetime of technical analysis, actually. And those rules apply in the exact same way across everything, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, or whether it's the S&P 500, these rules apply all the same. So we're going to go ahead and just take a look at a few of these things we talked about. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you kind of a more advanced level from one of my other courses called Future of Trading. This level here is simply just a valley that you have on your screen. If we were to take the triangle tool, this is just the creation of a valley in your screen. And this got hit in the past when the stock market was crashing and it was the perfect level to support the entire thing up. So you can see exactly where that point in the chart comes from. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because we're working off this example today for this. We're going to move down into time frames, right? As we talked about time frames, we're going to start with the highest time frame. And we are just going to simply start moving down in our time frames. We're going to start out by marking a trend here, right? We're going to mark a trend here to see how the S&P is doing. We should just mark a level right here. This looks great. Sure, we're not there yet, but in the future, this would be a great point of interest. So we've now marked our trend. We've marked our level. We can see that trend has held this move up here. It's held the move up here. It's starting to look like it may lose trend. We may have to adapt our trend out just as we talked about level adaptation. Our trend might have a moment where it kind of comes down and tests this level. And at that point, we would adapt our trend out, right? We would simply go here and move this level over for a second, adapt our trend to here if this is indeed what happens. So that's one possibility where we could adapt the level and something where, if you remember me talking about trends are levels as well, we would adapt them as well as levels. An opportunity to maybe adapt this thing to make more sense in the future. We can go ahead and if we would have marked this, you would have seen it try to struggle to get over the level. So that's a point that's no longer useful on our chart. We don't want to keep it. Instead, we needed to see that, hey, it tested this level and it simply moved over it. Just as if you adapted it to here, you would have seen it test this level and it needs to move over it. And if you adapted it to here, the same thing and all the way to the top of the chart. So kind of the next level on the chart would be up at the top here. Now, again, going into this, there is various different ways you can mark this level. You could use this point. You could use one right here. There's a varying degree of different levels that you can mark and they all have their time in place. But again, just for the beginner's course, we're just marking kind of the top and bottom areas just to start to get a grasp on these concepts of how to mark levels, when we adapt them, why we adapt them. Some of these different concepts that we've spent so much time building upon in the beginner's course. So now we're going to just, again, mark the top of the move just to see where, hey, maybe there's a point of resistance here in the future. Now we can mark the bottom, maybe an area of interest, an interesting looking candle. We can mark an area of interest and this would be another advanced level from a different course. But for this course, we just mark the bottom. But just so you know, there was a level that was hit here and this perfectly supported the move. But just like there would be a level down here as the bottom of the move and it tests the bottom here, just like there would be the bottom of a move here. Well, this one looks interesting to me because if we kind of went up the chain of command on these different levels, you'd have one that was created here and tested. So we know this one can't be true. So the next one that can be true, if this one is already tested and we kind of expect it to fail, we would either want to be here or we maybe want to be on the one lower than that. So we could have two interesting areas that we mark together. Now, maybe we're going to go down and test one of these, maybe not. That's for you to do your work on and to see which levels are going to get hit and tested. So we've successfully marked one trend, a few different levels of support that may happen. We can even go back up into our timeframes and maybe mark something else. Well, I think we've done a good job with this one. I think this is okay. And we have this here. So maybe let's mark one more as a bit of a higher time frame. For this, we're going to use this one. Yeah, okay, this looks interesting. Let's maybe change the color to reflect it's a different time frame. 
So we can use a different color to reflect that. Maybe it's a, a higher time frame. If we are on our daily charts and we see three blue lines, well, maybe blue for us is a daily time frame and purple would be a weekly time frame. This is a great idea to do as a day trader because you can start to color code things. That way you don't have to wonder, hey, where did I mark this level? You simply have a color that can communicate that for you, right? So we've done a great job of marking a few different areas of interest on the bottom side of this thing, but we're missing something. Do you know what we're missing? I'll give you a second to think about it. Mm, okay, time's up. We're missing the top trend. So here we would want to mark the high point to the high point of the candle. Just like we marked the trend on the bottom side, we still need to mark this high point trend as well, the two top points on the top side of your chart as another level of resistance. So if we were to actually go into this and take a look, we could see that this trend has been indeed acting as a level and resisting price. If we were to actually break down in timeframes, I'm sure you would see multiple tests of the same level. If we were to take the history lesson and say the first touch rule is always going to get rejected, well, this trend was created from this point to this point. And therefore, once it tests again, it should get rejected. Well, aha, look what you have here. Reject the trend and break your bottom trend. So you actually do have exactly that. Our history lesson paid off. It actually is helping us now make money. So what we're going to do next is we are going to see what it's going to take for this trade to maybe break this trend. I think in a trade like this, if you were asking me my personal opinion, you would need to test the level on the bottom side, have that level hold, and then you want to see if you can work your way up towards trend. So I'm going to draw out a scenario of something that may be a possibility in this chart. Now, whether this happens or not is not really the question. We just want to kind of make logical decisions and use the points of data and all the things that we learned in the beginners course to kind of make smart, well thought out decisions. So just like we talked about where you have trends on the top side and bottom side, this trend is kind of already broken here. So I think we may be going for a little bit of a pullback. We're going to see over the next coming days if the S&P is actually going to pull back. But I would expect to see something along the lines of this. Our top side of trend where it got created got touched for the first time and rejected. Well, we know trends are levels. And if our history lesson is correct in that first touch equals rejection, well, this did reject off it. And we can maybe expect it to break when it comes back up. That would be one possibility. Another possibility is that we create one of these wedge moments where you have two trends that are supporting a move on the top side. It keeps rejecting on the bottom side. It keeps supporting and it kind of comes to this point where it has to move up or down. So this is another possibility we have to keep in our mind. We have to start kind of crafting out all these different possibilities that could happen. Now, the list of possibilities as you get further and further into day trading, grow and grow and grow and grow. But as you get better, you are able to take maybe those 50 different possibilities or 20 or 30 different possibilities or even 40. And you're able to acutely pick the exact ones that are going to happen by further understanding the deeper layers of this science. What I think is going to happen, and we're just going to keep it kind of as a simple example for this beginner's course, is maybe you're going to go down and test the level. And then at that point, you're going to break trend and you're going to simply come up here and test this for the first time, have a little bit of a pullback. And I don't really think you're going to have that much of a move down. Now I'm going to share a key piece of information with you. That's actually from one of my much more advanced courses. Kind of think of this as an Easter egg for the beginners course as a deeper look into something way more advanced. We can't actually see, and this lines up with level adaptation, how we're only marking the next moments in our charts. We can't actually see if these moments are going to happen yet. Pretending like we can would simply just be us trying to be fortune tellers. This is not the case. We can't see that far into the future. We can only see the next moment in the chart. So what we can see is that we have a trend here that's lost and you have the next data points. In order to see if this is going to be hit, we have to see how the next data points are going to react. We can't tell if we're actually going to test this level if we haven't broken trend. And in the way in which we break trend, we can't see if we're going to go above this level if we don't understand how trend has been reacted to yet because that moment hasn't come yet. You simply can only see the next moments in day trading. And this can go as far as saying, oh, you can only see the next moment in day trading on the 15 minute candle. Well, this is true. If you were to up your time frame, you could only see the next moment in the respect to the one hour chart. Well, you can only see the next moment in respect to the daily chart. This is true. You can see the next daily moment. You can do the same thing to go to the weekly, to the monthly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But beyond those moments, you can't see what's happening. If you ever come across these thoughts that, hey, I know what's happening in the market four and five steps ahead of the world, well, you're simply wrong because even the top day traders, they react to the data points that are created in the moment or that are created for those time cycles and they make the decisions thereafter. How could we possibly make a decision about what's happening up here 
if we haven't seen what's happened down here yet or down here. We can't. So just keep that in mind. If you think you know what's going on, you don't. So that's it for Beginner's Course Remastered. We were able to create a killer foundation and something that we can use and carry forward for the rest of our lives. These founding pieces that I have given you are the groundwork to becoming a top tier trader. It may not be at the highest level yet, but that's the key word yet. You all have to start somewhere and this is that first step. Next on the docket for you is the advanced course remastered. This is going to further build upon these concepts that we work through. And then there's going to be courses that I recommend after that. I have tons of material out there, but we all have to start somewhere. So this was a great course. Congratulations. You're done beginners course remastered. Now let's keep working hard and move on to the advanced course remastered. I'll see you there.